In fact, I love how the Amplified Version captures Jesus' words here. Take a look at this. It says, therefore, I tell you, stop being perpetually uneasy about your life. Friends, if there is a clear-cut definition of worry, this is it. Worry is the state of being perpetually uneasy about some aspect of your life. And so in Matthew chapter 6, when Jesus says, do not worry about your life, here's what he's saying, that it's okay to have a healthy concern about your life, but don't become perpetually uneasy about every single difficulty and challenge that you face. Now, friends, if this is the problem, in other words, if this is the diagnosis, then what is the cure? If Jesus says, do not worry about your life, then what is the solution? Well, friends, this morning, we're going to see that, that one of the ways that we can deal with worry is what Max Lucado calls simply counting to eight. Check this out. In Matthew chapter 14, Jesus, we have the story of, of him feeding the 5,000. You remember this, right? But right before he did that, all day long, what was he doing? He was healing people, right? They, they were coming from all over the countryside, and he was healing them. And as the sun was beginning to dip down towards the horizon, this is what happened. Take a look. Matthew chapter 14 Verse 15, it says, as evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place. And it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Huh. Now, notice here that the disciples, they don't ask Jesus to do this. What do they do? They command him. They don't even call him Lord. They don't even give him a title. They said, hey, Jesus, we're not a Publix. We don't have food trucks for all these people. You've got to go and tell them to go back into town and get their own food. Now watch how Jesus responds to this ultimatum. This is always great. Take a look. Verse 16, it says, Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. Oh. Hey, disciples, guess what? You are going to be the publics today. You are going to be the food trucks today. In fact, you're going to gather all these people and you're going to feed them. And so you remember what happened? The disciples, they went around, they tried to gather all this food together. They brought it together and Jesus asked them, how much did they have? And this was their response. Take a look, verse 17. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish. Five loaves of bread and two fish. Now friends, imagine the scene for a moment. Disciples, they've been going around, they're trying to gather all this food. They bring it together and they start to count it. Okay, uh, Peter, how many loaves of bread do we have? Uh, Peter's like one, two, three, four, five. Five loaves of bread. Okay, John. John, how many, how many fish do we have? And John's like, uh, one, two, two fish. And James is like, okay, so in terms of total number of items, here we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Huh. Well, guys, that's, that's not going to be enough food to feed all these people. I mean, that's, that's like a date for do at the Bonefish Grill, but this isn't going to be enough to feed all of these people that have gathered here today. And friends, you can imagine them starting to what? starting to worry. Now, let me ask you this. As all this is going on, what do you think Jesus is thinking? As he's watching his disciples count the items, what do you think he's thinking? You know, scripture doesn't tell us what he's thinking in that moment, but I can imagine that he might have been thinking something like this, like, hey, here are my disciples. They've counted to seven. Good job. But you know what? I wish they would include me in that count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh yeah, and Jesus is here. Eight. You see, friends, that day, the difference for the disciples was between seven and eight. Because with seven, they had nowhere near amount the food that they needed to feed all these people. But with eight, with Jesus, they had everything they needed. After all, wasn't it Jesus that said, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you shall find? Wasn't it Jesus who said, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. Wasn't it Jesus who said, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours? You see, friends, the, the solution to the disciples' problem, he was standing right next to them. Jesus was right there and yet they didn't turn to him. They simply stopped at seven and they began to worry. Now friends, let me ask you, when you face challenges and difficulties in your life, do you typically stop at seven? 
In other words, is Jesus intimately involved in those challenges and difficulties? Do you invite him in in prayer to say, hey, Jesus, this is what's going on right now? You see, for the disciples that day, the lesson was that as they faced that difficulty and challenge, they needed to learn to count on Jesus. You know what? The same is true for you and I today. When we face challenges and difficulties in our life, we need to learn to count on Jesus. We need to learn to count on the one who washes away our sin. We need to learn to count on the one who gives us victory over death. We need to learn to count on the one who promises to be with us today and every single day to eternity. We need to learn to count on Jesus. And so, you know, as we close our time together this morning, I want to leave you with with eight practical solutions for your anxiety, okay? Eight things that you can do on a daily basis to help fight against the worry that you experience. Now, I realized that I just said that I was going to go through eight things, but don't worry, I'll move quickly, okay? Number one, keep a worry diary. Make a list of the things that you worry about, update it over time, name those things, and then from time to time, go back to that list and see if the things that you worried about actually turned into reality. For example, did I actually fail that test? Did my house actually burn down? Was my boss actually mad at me? Ask yourself these questions and make a list of the things that you worry about. And then number two, evaluate your worry categories. Okay, take a look at the things that you've listed and see if there's a category or categories that tend to come up in a certain way. For example, if I look at my list, am I constantly worried about finances? Or do I see my kids and my grandkids all over this list? Or do I see my job all over this list? What are the categories that I'm consistently worried about? And then number three, take your worries to Jesus. You remember the story of Jesus and his mother Mary? They're at the wedding and Mary sees that they've run out of wine. You know what Mary didn't do? She wasn't worried. She wasn't filled with anxiety. and said she simply went to Jesus and said, Jesus, we are out of wine. You know what, Jesus, because of who he was, he solved that problem. You see, once we've identified what it is that we're worried about, we need to take these things to Jesus and say, Jesus, here are the things that I'm worried about. I'm out of hope. I'm out of resources. I'm out of all these sorts of things. Jesus, here are the things that I'm worried about. And then number four, leave your worries with Jesus. You remember how Peter put it? He said, cast all your anxieties on him, Jesus, because he cares for you. We need to take our worries to Jesus and then leave our worries with Jesus. And then number five, recruit a worry army. Okay, enlist enlist a group of people in your life, family, friends, church folks, etc., who can pray for you and encourage and support you as you face the various difficulties and challenges in your life. Because here's the reality, as you and I both know, Jesus did not call on us to deal with these things by ourselves But instead, time and time again, Scripture says that we are to love and support and encourage one another as we what? Carry each other's burdens. Okay, recruit a worry army. Number six, become a worry slapper. Treat your worries like mosquitoes. Slap them. Okay, slap them for the energy-sucking critters that they are. Don't let them have one more drop of your time or your joy or your energy. The moment your anxiety surfaces, slap it. Okay, become a worry slapper. Number seven, understand God's man of plan. You remember in the wilderness, when the the Israelites were wandering around for 40 years, God didn't give them a bunch of food right up front. Remember, he gave them just what they needed for that day. Friends, that's why we say in the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. We are asking God to provide for our needs daily. God's not going to give us $233,000 but he is going to give us what we need when we need it. And you know what? You and I, we can approach his throne of grace with confidence and simply ask him for what we need for today. Finally, number eight, let God be enough. In our gospel reading for this morning, when Jesus says, do not worry about your life, you remember what he said just a few verses later? He said, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given unto you. You see, friends, when we seek other kingdoms, our worries appear. But you know what? Our worries disappear when we seek the kingdom of God. 
So my prayer for each and every one of us here today is that when we wake up and we get out of bed each and every morning, that we would look out into the world and we would live bold and courageous lives by first giving our worries to Jesus. Because you know what the scripture shows us this morning? Worry doesn't work. But Jesus does. And therefore, when you and I experience difficulties and challenges in our lives, may we always learn to count on the one who died for our sins, who rose from the dead, and one day will come again and take us to be with him. Amen? Amen.